Hey everyone, long time no see. It's been a minute since I've sat down and done a chatty video on YouTube, but I've been watching way too many white commentary YouTubers lately, and I figure I need to diversify the space with my half Chinese-ness. So at this point, it's clear that I write songs to talk about my experiences and feelings and all of that, but lately I've been having a really hard time figuring out a way to put my emotions into music. And even when you do write a song, sometimes that then becomes a piece of content that you're like branding and everything. So it has maybe more of a tendency to turn into a chore than something that actually functions as emotional release. All to say, I haven't really been writing music lately, but I am a 22 year old who lives in Brooklyn, New York, which is an entire nation away from my family and most of my friends. And so I figured the best middle ground to kind of satiate the loneliness and sadness that I feel inside is to vent my feelings on YouTube. To be honest, for the last few years, I feel like I've been really creatively and personally checked out of a lot of things that I do. And being on the internet has definitely felt like a monumental task. Between the global pandemic and then the worldwide trauma that we all endured, I think it's safe to say that I didn't really feel comfortable posting much about myself online. I haven't really felt like myself nor wanted to share anything about who I thought I was which I didn't really think very much. I think I kind of just view myself as like a fleshy blob of a person at this point. And I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people too. I've never been really good at kind of focusing on the present and appreciating it and enjoying the now, but I am really good at wondering about what ifs. And I'll bet that's the mindset of virtually every person, either because of COVID or just because that's the experience of being a human being. I know for me, before the pandemic, I felt like I was just about to spread my wings and fly, only to have them chopped off and then dangled in front of my face every three months with the promise that things are going to get better. But I'm still in 2023 begging people to get vaccinated. Please, for the love of God, get vaccinated. And for the last three years or so, I feel like I've just been mourning a version of myself that I am never going to get to meet and processing the amount of work that I need to do internally to just move forward and wake up every single day. I'm sure a lot of that is COVID related, but I also think that this is just a huge piece of what it's like to be in your 20s. Which brings me to the main point of this video. I just wanted to make something where I could rant about how fucking weird it is to be in your 20s. And trust me, I was really excited to be 20 and everything beyond it. I entered the music industry when I was 18 years old. And so a lot of the people that were around me were like almost a decade older than me. And so I would look at them and think, oh my God, I can't wait to be older. Oh my God, I can't wait to be in my 20s. I think everything will just click the moment that I turn 20. And this is not meant to be a humble brag, but I need to mention it because I read it on my wall the other day. The New York Times wrote an article about me when I was 19 which is amazing. It's wonderful. It's a great article. Um, but the writer, Joe, shout out to Joe. Thank you for interviewing me. He described me as a overly eager teenager who echoes the adults around her. I wanted to die when I read that because it was true. And I think in a lot of ways, I'm now just a 22 year old who echoes the adults around her. I mean, what else am I supposed to do? My entire adulthood so far has been spent quarantined indoors with stunted social skills that were already bad in the first place and just got worse because there was no environment for me to get better at them. The only time that I was actually socializing with people was when I was rage quitting on Valorant or Overwatch or that time that I accidentally stumbled into Minecraft YouTube and then promptly walked away because I'm too introverted and awkward to be in such a hugely social environment all the time. There are so many people in Minecraft YouTube and I am just myself. On top of that, in 2020, I moved to New York City and I like it here, but it's notoriously one of the most isolating cities to live in. I think there's ways you can find community, but I'm not gonna fucking do that. I'm not a partier. I'm not very social. My social battery is about equivalent to a 2013 MacBook Air running The Sims with overheating fans and all. And in my life, I probably have about four friends that might even be too generous. Maybe there's other people out there that would consider us friends, but to be frank, I think that I'm too annoying for anyone to genuinely like me. And I know it's not cool to hate yourself in 2023, but I never said I was cool. And on top of the never ending list of complaints that I just presented you, I missed out on one of the biggest opportunities for social engagement that I could have had in my life, college. 
I did not go to college. And of course, it was the right choice for me because now I make music and thank God I do that because I think I probably would have just gone into an insane amount of debt instead. But Jesus Christ, I am truly, every day I think, what would have happened if I went to college? I mean, eventually COVID would have hit and it still would have sucked, but I wonder all the time how my life would be different. God, I am so Evelyn Wang coded. It's unreal. But back to being in your 20s. What the fuck is the deal? Being in your 20s is so overly hyped. It's crazy. I am only two and a half years into this shit and I already want to get out. Like when I found out your brain doesn't even fully develop until you're like your mid to late 20s, I felt a piece of myself die inside. I was that kid that grew up with adults telling me everywhere that like I was so mature for my age and I was wise beyond my years which is all bullshit. And so when I realized that the sack of squiggles inside of my head won't be done figuring its shit out for at least another three years in my life, until you're at least 25, I genuinely wanted a refund. And I'm sure that I will look back on all of this and be like, I loved being in my 20s and I miss it so much. I don't know why I turned into that when I'm an old lady. Right now, I just feel lost and kind of miserable most of the time. I don't know what my goals are. I don't know what my dreams are. I let myself get eaten away by comparing myself to others. And I'm so self-aware of all of this that it actually feels more like a prison than a tool for self-improvement. And for me, I think the most stressful part about being in my 20s is the fact that I feel like I'm just wasting it. I'm 22, I'm turning 23 this year, and I feel like a lot of the people around me or media and movies and TV shows all say like, your 20s is the best part of your life and you should just live it. You're gonna love it. And I think that there's definitely obviously pieces that we acknowledge as being confusing and weird and awkward, but I also feel like there's this immense pressure to be extraordinary. We feel that same sort of pressure when we're teenagers, right? Like when we're in high school, we look around and we're like, oh my god, I'm a teenager and I should be living it up and dancing on tables and so I could date this girl named Gabriella. God, the stresses of teenage life. I wonder if someone wrote a song about that. <laughs> Stream Prom Dress by MXM2. And then all of that stress that you felt when you were a teenager just continues to carry on into the next years of your life into your 20s and then probably your 30s and then your 40s and your 50s and every year after that. And I don't expect the gnawing nature of what ifs to ever really leave my brain, but it definitely feels like really emphasized right now. And now before someone goes and leaves a comment, which will probably say, but Maya, you've done so much with your life. How could you not like yourself? Oh, be happy. I really, I don't know why I just like assigned that voice to you. <laughs> Here's what I have to say to that. I have done a lot with my life. I'm incredibly lucky and it's also not normal at all. Which brings me to the next point of something that I've been finding myself do a lot lately, which is compare myself to other people. And this feeling is definitely not aided by social media being the center of virtually everything we do as people because it's really easy just to look at the screen and we all know that everything that is shared online is very curated. This video is even curated. But fuck man, it is so easy just to look at everyone around you and be like, they've got their shit figured out. And I thought about this when I was reading Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. She talks about this jealousy and the feeling she has towards Ariana Grande. And a lot of people jumped on that and they were like, Jeanette, how could you be so mean to Ariana? Like, I don't think she was being mean. I think she's just pointing out one of the most human parts of our experiences. We feel envy regardless of where we are in our lives to other people all the time. Take this for example. I am relentlessly jealous of Olivia Rodrigo. Do I dislike Olivia? Not at all. I think she's wonderful. But it's because I think she's so wonderful that I also harbor a lot of envy for her. I like her style. I like her music. I think she's beautiful. But in the same ways that I do that with her, I'm sure that there's people that look at me and even think those same things. I'm not like always envious of celebrities. Like I was, I'm envious of random people I see on the fucking street. Someone could be wearing cool pants and I'd be like, holy shit, they're the coolest person in the whole entire world. Like I said, feeling envy is incredibly human, especially in a world that prizes you off of youthfulness. I think it's really easy to feel that increased pressure 
to be exceptional when you're young and to look at other young people and think, oh my God, I'm not doing enough. For example, something I've been thinking about a lot recently as I've gotten into Formula One is the fact that athletes pretty much get booted by the time they're 29 from all of their sports, like that's crazy. Or how people talk about women in their 30s in the entertainment industry as like if they're expiring, which is so far from the truth. Even I, as someone who has experienced a really nice amount of success in my life, I'm not gonna deny that. I worry all the time that every day I get older, I'm becoming farther and farther away from being young enough that my accomplishments are impressive. And I'm sure that there will be people who watch this video and just go, oh, she's so ungrateful. But I just say this to emphasize the point that every person is susceptible to comparing themselves to others. I didn't just start doing this recently. Like I've been doing this as long as I can remember. When I was in school, I tried to get straight A's, set records in my extracurriculars. I would secretly pit myself against the top students in my class just to prove that I could be the best. I know about myself now that I admittedly have this obsessive need to be on the top and to be told that I'm doing a really good job at that, which of course I have been in therapy for, for years. And now that I'm 22, and I'm in the real world, that pool of like 25 people in an English classroom that I'd be like, how can I be the best person in this classroom? Has now expanded to a entire world filled with millions of people that include individuals like Billie Eilish. I don't even know Billie. Billie doesn't even know me. But do I compare myself to her and think, oh my gosh, she's younger than me and more successful and am I doing something wrong? Is that what I should be like? Even though Billy doesn't even know my name. And frankly, I don't even think I want her level of success in the first place. It's just so easy to look at somebody else out there and think they have got it all figured out. I was listening to the podcast interview that they did for Jenna Ortega on Armchair Expert, and she mentioned basically how weird it is to be so young and have this huge moment in her, in her career and just be surrounded by people that are like, asking her what her goals and her dreams are when she has very little concept of what they are. And I found so much comfort in that because I feel like everybody around me has these big ideas and expectations of how I must know everything. And I just don't. I mean, for the last five years in the music industry, the number of interviews that I've had where they've asked me like, what are your dreams? And I can't think of anything. And it's not that I am not an ambitious person. I think I am ambitious. I just think that my dreams don't feel like they're as big as they should be. What I want in my life is just to be able to provide for my loved ones, uh, do a little silly art every once in a while, and have a home with my cats and a small garden. I am consciously aware of like the fact that the person I am today has only lived a fraction of the larger life that I will hopefully live. But I find the concept of like figuring out what you have to do with your whole life right now being, that's just really stressful. Like college always really stressed me out because the idea of like determining your life path at the age of 18 was just like kind of fucked up. I've never understood how someone can have so much clarity over what they want to do with their life. We've reached the point of the video where I no longer have a like an outline for what I want to say. I'm just going to say shit. And I realize this video is kind of just a larger rant so that way I can talk about the struggles that I've had recently. I think I just need to know that I'm not alone. Because when I look at the world right now, I feel like it's really hard to look at the world and feel optimistic and excited about what lays ahead for us. I feel like everywhere I look, it's just, oh, you know, we've got 30 le years left on the planet. And so I'm like, okay, cool. That is so awesome and cool, thank you. And like our government fucking sucks. There's just a lot of negative areas to pay attention to. Negative isn't even the right word because it's like doomsday, the actual situation that's presented with us. And then to find yourself being at an age where you're supposed to have your whole life ahead of you, but to be actively told by the world that that life might not actually be promised in the same way that it could have been, just kind of fucking blows. I feel really paralyzed by the situation at hand. I feel sad that the last three years we've all collectively had these huge moments of our lives taken from us and adjusted because of a pandemic. And I can't stop my brain from wondering, what if? What if none of that had happened? What if people had taken better care of the world? What if America wasn't so fucking weird and corrupt? What if? So yeah, I've just been feeling really sad and unsure about what to do. And it's a hard balancing act to like wake up 
be excited about stuff and figure out plans to move forward when it just feels like it's all so but at the same time i know that everything has a meaning i know the words i say to other people have impact the things i do in my day-to-day -day life matter but sometimes i just feel so isolated that it's hard to bring myself out of the space of thinking that nothing matters i wish i had some sort of like wisdom or life advice that could be offered in this video instead i think this is just a confession that I am really struggling right now and I don't really know who I am and more than anything being in my 20s has just made me feel really isolated easily slipping into this idea that every person around me has figured it out way more than I have so I guess I'm just asking like does it get better does all of this last forever my guess is a bit of both I just feel like I've been sitting in this feeling for so long I can't possibly be the only person that feels this way. So yeah, this is my return to YouTube chatty videos. I don't think all of them will just be existential crises that I'm going through, but this has been something that I've been thinking about a lot lately. I feel like I've just been reading and consuming content about it as well, and it feels like I would be doing myself and others a disservice if I wasn't honest about how I feel. So that way, at least one person out there can know that they are also not alone in being a complete and utter mess. But yeah, being in your 20 sucks. Being a teenager sucked. I'm sure a lot of years moving forward, things will suck and nothing matters, but nothing matters. Nothing really matters. Anyone can see. Nothing. Nothing.